In this video, I'm gonna show you why this laptop is worth the $2,800 that I spent on it. You sound insane, do you realize that? And if that's a little bit too pricey for your specific taste, don't worry, I'll have some recommendations that will be more suitable for perhaps your needs. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the features, functionality, and performance to show you the value packed into the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition, imagine with <laughs> Intel, oh my gosh, it's a mouthful. Uh, holiday hoobie whatty. ThinkPads have a long history and there's become quite a cult following around them. If you go on Reddit, it is quite amazing to see the passion that is dedicated to these ThinkPad devices. Now it's pretty interesting because they've become insanely thin. This laptop weighs less than one kilogram and it's a bit of a change from the original chunky thick think pads uh, I remember back in my childhood. So it's incredible to see how light these laptops have become and they're very thin. Now that does not mean that they are not rigid. They are very rigid. You can see there's barely any press along the top cover of the device. Flip it over along the bottom cover as well. Very well put together. I love the soft rounded edges of the device. The carbon material that they use is very comfortable to hold and just absolutely incredible how light it is. Now there are some really neat little accent details. I love the brushed aluminum tab along the top which houses the webcam. Here's a quick sample of that webcam so you can see it in use for yourself. This is the webcam on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Aura Edition and a little sample of the audio for you as well. I want to thank Lenovo and Intel for sponsoring this video. More about that to come later. But I know what you're thinking. Can you trust this review? Lenovo and Intel did not tell me what to say in this video, nor did they change what I have said in this video. He doesn't, I don't, he doesn't tell me what to do. He just, Told you what to I do. know, he, I let him. Okay, let's get back into the video. And they still have the classic light up eye within the ThinkPad name on the top cover of the laptop. So I love these little details that have come through the heritage of this device. Now this does seem to be eliminating the ThinkPad Nano, which was their you know flagship thin and light device. The X1 Carbon, specifically the 14 inch model, has become the de facto thin and light device. So the first reason that this laptop is a great purchase is the thin and light build quality. There is, there's nothing nothing like it, it's in a category of its own. The upgrade path is the next reason that I'm quite impressed with this device. As I pulled off the bottom cover, I was pleased to find that there was an upgradable M.2 slot, which houses a PCIe Gen 5 SSD. Not a ton of laptops are coming out in 2024 with Gen 5. So it's really cool to see that there you have the speeds with the SSD in this device. So again, the premium nature of the device rings true by putting the correct components within this laptop to make it worth its price. Now you'll see the two fans and you'll see an additional or what looks to be an additional M.2 slot. However, I was unable to fit an M.2 drive in that slot. Uh, you can see some close up B-roll of that slot and it just wouldn't fit. If you're smarter than me in the comment section, please comment below. Let me know what's going on here. It wasn't fitting, it wasn't the right size, but it looks to be an additional M.2 slot. So I can confirm for sure that there is one M.2 slot that is upgradable and possibly a second. Now, one big, uh, whoa, almost fell, complaint that I have for this device is the 57 watt hour battery. Though Intel and Lenovo worked closely together to produce these laptops and they made them quite efficient, the battery life, as you can see coming up on the screen, is one of the best we've ever seen for the ThinkPad series but I just wish they would have given it a slightly larger 70 or 73 watt hour battery. I mean, a similar laptop in the Aura edition, you know, branding, the Yoga Slim 7i comes with a 70 watt hour battery. And that laptop got slightly better battery life results than the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. So for me, that's an area where they could have made this laptop even better. Now, one thing that can be really easy to miss is the speaker placement of this laptop. I want you to notice this little box here. Because as you can see along the bottom of this device, there's no speaker grills. Let's open up the laptop real quick. No speaker grills on the top of the device. The audio actually comes through the keyboard. The speaker is nestled behind the keyboard deck. I really like this. It has excellent sound quality. For a thin and light laptop, this is insane because they usually have pretty janky sound quality. And so that's one area that I really liked. Now I will note that when you're typing on the keyboard, it does interfere with the sound a little bit. I'm gonna give you an audio sample of my hands over the keyboard and then my hands not over the keyboard so you can hear for yourself what it sounds like when using it in both ways.
I want to thank Lenovo and Intel for sponsoring this video, making it possible to review the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition imagined with Intel. It is only possible to keep this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way with great partners like Lenovo and Intel. So definitely give them a huge shout out in the comments below. And if you're interested in making a purchase, head on over to Lenovo.com using the links in the description below. Check the live pricing and see which model is the best fit for your needs. The ports on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 are USB type A on the left side plus two USB type C's. Flip it over to the right side, Kensington lock, HDMI, USB A, and a headphone jack. This laptop is so thin, so light. They still gave us a great selection of ports. A lot of times when they thin out laptops, make them super light, they just like forget the ports. And that's one thing that I really like about the ThinkPad series is they're making them thin and light, but they're not compromising on user experience. Though this laptop is so thin, is so light, it opens and closes so easily with one hand. And that concerned me because I thought, okay, we're gonna have a lot of screen bounce, but the screen bounce stops fairly quickly. Engineering did a really nice job with the hinge connecting the panel to the keyboard deck. Now, speaking of this panel, that is an area where I, I just, my hat, for sure came off. In the past, ThinkPads have been more focused on the business market and therefore panel color calibration, color accuracy, that wasn't really something that they paid attention to. But now with this new display, we have an OLED 2.8K display, 2880 by 1800 resolution. It has 401 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.71. Now, another thing I wanna point out about this panel is it is a glossy display, but it has an anti-glare film on it. So it's almost like a hybrid gloss matte display. As I turn it up, you can see that there is some detail that can be seen, but it's much more muted than if this was a fully glossy display. In comparison, here is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition. And I mean, you can completely see my face and all detail in my hands. And then over here, it's very muted. So it's a very nice hybrid between glossy and matte, especially when you think about the amount of color gamut range and color accuracy, the vibrancy, the dark darks of this panel. It's a great mix. And for me, I like the color accuracy of a glossy OLED display, but I also really prefer a matte display for the anti-glare effect. And this just nails both of those. That's where I'm saying this laptop literally has it all. And that's where this laptop is, you know, $2,800 with shipping and taxes. Um, now, if you wanna check the live pricing, it could be on sale. So you might be able to snag a deal. Head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, let's talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. You do have a fingerprint reader on the keyboard deck, which is super nice, right next to your super unhelpful co-pilot button. What? What? Yeah, let's move on from that. The keyboard has kind of medium noise. You can definitely hear it. It's a little bit clicky, but not obviously as, as clicky as you know, a gaming keyboard. I like the way that they've set up the, the arrow keys. They've made them the singular small keys and pushed them down a little bit. So you still have each arrow key the same size. That's really nice. Now moving down to the trackpad, there is both a haptic trackpad and a glass trackpad version. The version I have has the glass trackpad with the manual click buttons and the center click button. Um, I like the trackpad, it's quiet. It is secured well to the chassis. I have a tiny bit of rattle on the left side of the model that I purchased, none on the right. Um, so it is secured well, but I noticed a little bit, just a hair of that rattle, so just keep that in mind. I always want these reviews to be extremely honest and you get my raw, real feelings about each device. Now, one thing I wanna show you that I really like about the ThinkPad series is they've put in a little mode button here at F8. And it allows you to quickly access some different modes. So I'm running this in performance mode, but you can quickly jump it into bounced or best power efficiency mode. You can turn on the shield, which gives you an extra layer of encryption. You can turn on wellness mode, which will actually remind you to like sit up straight, to take a break, walk around. There's also an attention mode, which will eliminate any notifications. Even if you have notifications turned on in different applications, it'll override that 
and keep you focused on your task at hand. So you just go ahead and click the mode thing and that goes away. So it's really nice. You have quick access to that. You don't have to like come in here, launch the Lenovo Center and it's easy to use. Speaking of the performance modes, while web browsing, even on performance mode, I didn't have any fan noise kick on. I saw that was a big concern in like the Reddit forums. I didn't have any other applications open, so just keep that in mind. But as we get into video editing, I did notice quite a bit of fan noise on performance mode. For this test, I put in a 4K clip inside of Premiere Pro, exported out at full quality 4K settings. That's a nine minute clip. I saw anywhere from 41 to 43 decibels of fan noise with a CPU temperature of about 58 to 67 degrees Celsius. I was able to accomplish a pretty fast export time. One of the fastest export time I've seen for thin and light devices. It came in at four minutes and nine seconds. Now I'm gonna show you a full comparison against other laptops later in the video, but I just wanted to get that to you now while I was talking about it. Also, lest I forget, one thing that I really like, cause I have done this more times than I care to admit, I love to drink coffee and tea and I drink a lot of water throughout my work day. And I've knocked drinks onto my laptop or onto my desk I mean, well over 10 times. And so that this laptop has a spill resistant keyboard is a big win for me. Cause I've actually ruined um, a very expensive laptop that way. It's terrible. Okay, now I promised that I would give you my negatives on this device. Now, first and foremost, if you're a digital artist, my channel is focused on creative professionals and you're looking for a laptop that has functionality like pen capability. This laptop does not have it. And the reason I bring that up is because this is an expensive laptop. And a lot of expensive laptops come with features like touch compatibility or pen compatibility. And this one does not. So I would avoid this laptop if you're looking for something pen compatible um, that would be suitable for a digital artist. Now, the next reason would be the noise. The laptop does make quite a bit of noise while editing video. And there's other devices like the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i or Edition that are quieter while editing 4K video. Now keep in mind, it's gonna be a little bit of a slower export time, but that is the benefit of having something that's a little bit more tuned to be more comfortable to use versus more of a business workstation approach. They're gonna allow the X1 Carbon to kick on the fans, to be able a little bit louder, to push the chipset more in order to get more performance, where this one's gonna throttle a little bit in order to keep it quiet and more of a comfortable experience. The Yoga Slim 7i comes in at around $1,300 or $1,400, depending on if you get 16 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of RAM. And I've seen them on sale for even less. So this would be a great alternative color accurate display, really great features on this device. Now keep in mind the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition is not pen compatible. So my recommendation, if you're looking for an alternative to the X1 Carbon would be a Lenovo Yoga 9i 2-in-1, which would be color accurate and pen compatible or the Lenovo Yoga 7i 2-in-1. Comes in both a 16-inch model and a 14-inch model, and that's gonna be more budget-friendly without that color-accurate display. I think the sRGB is like 64%. So you've got a few options if you're looking for an alternative to the X1 Carbon for the different needs you might have. The X1 Carbon that I have before me comes with the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, with Intel Arc 140V integrated graphics. It has 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte Gen 5 SSD. Now let's go ahead and get into the performance benchmarks. This is an area where I must say, Intel and Lenovo really nailed it in getting the performance and the efficiency, we saw the battery life results earlier, really tuned in. You can see in the simulated benchmarks that it's one of the top contenders against laptops that have come out in 2024. Now, moving on to Photoshop. This is an area, once again, that we're seeing great results inside of Photoshop, both on battery power and plugged into the charger. In the past, Windows laptops, when you unplug them from the charger, decrease in performance in order to be more efficient. And they needed the wall power to push the components to the level that they needed to get great performance inside of an application. We're not seeing that this year. We're seeing the performance maintained right at the same level as being plugged into power, which is incredible, which is awesome. I'm so stoked that we've got to a point with Windows laptops where that is true. Now, I also want to take a second to point out the ThinkPad Nano here on the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. For those of you considering a past generation ThinkPad and wondering what the performance differences might look like, this one is going to be with Intel two generations ago. So just giving you some context on how much improvement we have seen 
with these devices over the past two years. Now, moving on to video editing. As I mentioned, this is one of the fastest export times I've seen for a nine minute 4K clip exported out of Premiere Pro from a thin and light device, four minutes in nine seconds. Now the playback, zero drop frames for 4K and a little over 6,000 drop frames for 6K B-RAW. So you could edit 6K B-RAW on this laptop on the go. Now the export time is gonna be about 32 minutes for a nine minute clip, 6K to 6K export out of Premiere Pro, which is a little bit long, um, but not insanely long. I mean, just a couple of years ago, that would have been an export from a laptop with a dedicated GPU. So this super thin and light device is capable of some 6K video editing. Now, just to be totally honest, if you are serious about 6K video editing, I would recommend a dedicated GPU because it just makes it so much of a smoother experience, faster export times, and you'll just have a more enjoyable experience. But it's nice to know you could do some higher resolution video editing on the go with this laptop. Every time you add a feature or a quality component to a laptop, it adds in price point. And that is true with this laptop. We have premium materials making up a very thin and light device which is also powerful. We have a 2.8K OLED display with a glossy anti-glare coating. We have speakers integrated into the keyboard deck. We have PCIe Gen 5 SSD, a very nicely engineered keyboard and trackpad, a surprisingly generous amount of ports on the X1 Carbon. When it comes to the X1 Carbon, you get what you pay for. And I would say this is the best thin and light Windows laptop that I've seen on my channel this year. If you wanna check the live pricing, use the links in the description below. Otherwise, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decisions. I'll see you in the next one.